not so much about like the, you know, like I only brought up relationships to emphasize the different facets that go into maintaining one. But one of the things that I was, the, the focus of that was about power. And when you recognize that you have to use your power in a, in a friendship or relationship. So for instance, um, so I'm in a you know couple of bands or whatever, right? Yeah. And I'm not the band leader in those bands, but I do you know like the, I I have band leaders you know or people that are that are mainly calling the shots or whatever. Yeah. And so in one of these projects, one individual was the one who was mainly handling like this you know scheduling and getting more of the formal uh ele- you know stuff uh, uh together. And after a while, they started making more and more decisions. Um, and commitments to us or changing things at the last minute without our input. And yeah. it was like, at first, it's like I wanted to, you know, kind of, bl- you know, I would say bl- not even blow up, but it's like I really wanted to confront it in a very aggressive manner. But it's like I started, I started thinking about it, gave myself a little time to really ruminate, and, and it was like, and then the conclusion I kind of came to, I was like, okay, well, be switch it on yourself. What if you were in this situation where you're used to handling this element of, say, like, you know, organizing meetings or organizing meetups or whatever, and then you've been doing this thing for a couple of years or whatever, and nobody else has provided any input. So then after a while, you might start to just naturally assume that nobody else cares or that they're just okay with you calling all the shots and making all the changes you want. Or you may just be testing the waters to see what they let you get away with, right? In any case, I had to put myself in their shoes and think about, okay, there must be a rational reason for that. And so instead of confronting the situation with a, you know, how could you be doing this and blah, blah, blah. It's like I basically got all the other people to come together and be like, hey, we all need to be taking up space and flexing our own power and leverage and taking charge um, of shit. And, um, you know, obviously band activities and everything has kind of come to a halt. But in the months that followed, things were much more uh, following in the line of, of, of what everybody kind of wanted. And so, you know, basically dispersing the responsibilities, but that means that we had to step up and carry a little bit more of that burden and not just letting, allowing for somebody else to take care of it. So basically the basis was learning how to flex your power in different relationships and dynamics in order to achieve greater goals because, you know, maybe um, the other people that you're working with um, aren't as focused or disciplined or don't have uh, the same um, uh, long, you know, don't have the same vision. Yeah. I mean, I honestly think that just comes down, like, with chemistry building up later on down the line. Like, for me, like, you know, like, I have, you know, I've just, I've been in so many bands that, like, people have come and left. But now that, like, I have, like, a tight lineup and all that, you know, I kind of ran the show in a way. But I still let people have liberties of, like, giving input and all that. But, you know for you know for us being a band almost coming up to a year you know everybody starts giving their own input which i'm super but then again they know like you know to a certain extent because like i kind of like know the sense of direction but that's just like i think you know it's just it um it's a huge learning experience and i mean no matter what there are people for me like it's weird like i never really have seen myself as like a leader i mean Mm -hmm. To know that, I mean, because, like, I've had jobs that I've, you know, I was always a supervisor, but I'm more of somebody that likes to run on the front lines with other people, like, but still, like, get other creative input, you know, it just, I don't know, it's just, it's really weird for me to, like, ever be that higher power and, like, run the show. Mm -hmm. There are people who are born with it, or they want it, they want that, but... Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's like I like to run parallel with other people, but Mm -hmm. still, you know, but still trying to still show a little bit more of like the, um, you know, uh, just, yeah. Collab power. Yeah, collab power. Collab sharing power. Right. So here's, but here's the caveat with that, or here's the other element of that that I didn't mention is that these same, you may also have a person that you're working with whom you have to share power with, but they or basically you may be under so what do you do when you have somebody who is a leadership or has disproportionate power or be able to call the shots on something but yeah. they're the ones that are lacking in discipline or lacking in you know you know i'm trying to be vague as possible but you and yeah. i both share but it's like you and i both share an example um of, of recognizing that of feckless leadership or or people that um 
uh, people that we should be collaborating with and should be more studious and trying to get things done, but really the focus and the discipline and the support is really just not there. Yeah. And so it's just like, you know, it's kind of, it's, so it's kind of like recognizing that, okay, you kind of gone through the phase of trying to establish chemistry and it's kind of gone as far as it can because you're putting in your effort, um, yeah. but the other parties aren't meeting you halfway. So then, because the thing is, I'm also not somebody who was a leader who saw myself as a leader and, um, and the thing is, is that like, but the thing is, as I've gotten older and I start to think about my future and what things I want to have for myself and having my own little slice of the pie, um, is I'm just like, damn, I have to take on more burdens. I have to take on more shit. I have to be more of a leader and be willing to call more shots because some of the things that I want to get done or at least the way I want them to be done, um, requires a little bit, requires, uh, uh more support and coordination but the people that I have to coordinate with aren't nearly as focused or, you know, disciplined as I am. And yeah. so it's now it's starting. So now it's provoking that sense of me that those that quality of leadership where I'm like, damn, I don't really want to be the shot caller. But if I don't take the role, if I don't try to step up as the shot caller, then I'm just leaving myself victim. I'm just leaving myself victim to whomever happens to occupy that space or to the whims of the other people whom are just kind of doing their own thing, not knowing how much they're affecting me and the group at large. Can I uh, tuck in? Please. That was phrased weirdly. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, a couple of notes. One, what you just said, the uh, not doing anything and, and things get worse, that's, that, that, that's reflecting on that really common phrase that I've been attaching myself to a lot as of late, which is... Um, God, it, it's something along the lines of it's not neutrality it's like um passivity only rewards the oppressor it's something along those yes. lines i i had it completely in my head earlier but here we are but um as far as leadership goes uh i i, I don't what's most important isn't necessarily being like even excited about being uh, about being a leader or like thinking of yourself as a leader uh, mm. true leadership so okay I have a bit of credential in this one. I'm I'm a non-commissioned officer in the army. I'm a I'm a sergeant, mm -hmm. and so it's leadership isn't really about like I get to order people around. It's someone has to do it. This has to get done. It's not right. going to do itself. These people, no one else is stepping up to the plate. It mm -hmm. it, it has to be me. Yes, and that's that's the exact example that you two were talking about. It's not mm -hmm. a it's not a power grab. It's I mean like maybe technically it is, but it's not. It's not with that ill intent. It's not about like being selfish, because good leaders think about the big picture and they think about everybody you're looking after. Yeah, I think that's something that happens, especially like if you know people who identify with left wing politics, is because they're because excuse me, many of the people who are authoritarians or really try to take power and whatnot um, tend to be uh, right wingers. Of course, there's examples of of socialist uh, or communist uh, authoritarians. Um, but that's not, but that's not really the basis. That's usually the corruption of the philosophy and whatnot, as opposed to the design. You know, the design of Nazism or neoliberalism, um, you know, is explicitly for exploitation and for suppression and and, and whatnot. Um, but the thing is, in those in those political philosophies and spaces, the because of that history uh, of left and right uh, uh, division, um, power is usually seen as a negative thing. Um, when really it's a neutral thing. Power is just like, as, as I said at the beginning, power is power. Power is just you being able to use, um, having access to resources or spaces or something else to be able to make certain decisions and make certain things happen. And it's like, you know, I think that's, I think that's, you know, what that comes from is that oftentimes we kind of fantasize too much or we kind of romanticize, excuse me, the idea of coming back to democracy. And, um, you know, it's like, it's like on one hand, yeah, we want to have, as many people vote, we want, in theory, you want as many different people to participate in the system. Um, but the thing is, for everybody to actually make good contributions to the systems, that has to be a, a, a base level, a floor of, of what it is they bring to the table. There has to be a base level of their understanding of the system. There has to be a base level of their own convictions. There has to be a base level of their education and the resources that they have access to. Um, so, so, um, and that, and the thing is, access to those things comes from power. 
And so if you don't have somebody who has the interests of those individuals who might be left out of the conversation, um, then it's like, what do you do? And just like with that example, like you said, Dill, before, I made a, I put up a post on my Instagram from a, a, a black activist whose name was Stokely Carmichael. And his one of his lasting phrases or quotes is that pacifism only works if your if your opponent has uh, a, if your opponent has a, a moral system or if your if your opponent has morals or basically you know what I'm saying that's great that you want to be a pacifist but the person that you're that's opposing you um, is bringing every weapon on the table every weapon at their that's available to them and they don't give a fuck about your pacifism as a matter of fact that just makes it easier for them to uh, oppress you you know have you have you guys ever heard of the the old say an iron hand Fisted in a velvet glove. Wait, say oh, that again. Oh, I like that. I have not heard that, but I like it a lot. Yeah, it's it's like it means. Say, like, say it again. An iron hand fisted in a velvet glove. And oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, like a leadership term of you know used to describe someone who seems to be gentle but in fact forceful and determined. Yeah, I use the term benevolent dictator. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> It's all the thing is it's all kind of the same. It's all I mean, but it's all alluding to the same thing because it's uh, it also comes from that Machiavellian question, right? Is it better to be loved or, or I don't know if it's from Machiavelli, uh, but that old phrase of um, is it better to that old question is it better to be feared or loved? And as a matter of fact, it is Machiavelli because a lot of people misconstrue it uh, because I've described myself as Machiavellian, but kind of like with the with the with the same thing with power is that it gets a negative weight attached to it unnecessarily um, because of the. Uh, 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 kind of short-sighted associations that people have made with it, but yeah, wasn't that a critique of that approach? Like the prince itself, I, th- I thought the it, it existed to call out people who were like that. No, because really, what the prince is is that, like a lot of once again to the good, good and bad analogy, people people take it as, oh, he's saying that it's better to be uh, feared than it is to be loved. Is that he? No, what it's what it's showing you is the efficacy. Of doing things that basically what it boils down to is that what makes you an efficient leader sometimes makes you unliked by the populace at large you know what i'm saying it's just kind of like it's basically saying that there's a trade-off that in order to be a in order to do things that are necessary at the state level at the level of a state or the level of a federal you know of a nation or whatever um requires you to make certain sacrifices that'll upset upset certain parts of the general public uh-huh. I mean, like, there's there's limits to that, right? So, like, of course, everything everything has conditions and whatnot. No... I, I know. All all I'm saying is, you you can't take that to its logical ex- extreme for the same reason why science has, uh, you know, has all these moral guidelines. Has ethics is the word I'm looking for. Of uh, course, but yeah. So, like, uh, efficiency. You could, you know, when they um the, people learn, like Nazi doctors learned a lot, and you know, um, tr- developmental psychologists turn of the century like experimenting on abandoned children learned a lot but mm-hmm. that's the price like we have those ethics for the betterment of society and those barriers are there for a reason i think it's the same thing applies to what you're talking about oh well, yeah i mean the thing is it's just like i and once again i talk about stuff with the understanding that that there's always conditions and that everybody has their own limitations um, but that's kind of the general in the general ballpark of of how i'm thinking um, of course, there's going to be conditions about like it's 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 you can't just look at it like oh you know slavery it's very efficient at being able to deliver you know <laughs> goods at a certain you know blah 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 it's like there's a huge you know obviously there's many conundrums with that but overall it's like once again I'm not trying to defend it I'm just breaking down really what the meaning of like the prince and, and Machiavellianism because because Machiavelli and I mean Machiavelli himself was a victim to the shit that he described in his books because he was a basically a bureaucrat. Um, whom was around when a bunch when power changed hands, and sometimes he was at the top of the food chain, and other times he was at the bottom. And so his 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 writings and philosophy wasn't so much a defense of or even a critique of the shit. It was just saying, here's what happened, here's what was successful, here's what was not successful. It was so it, so in many ways it was more so. I shouldn't have said I shouldn't have, shouldn't have said efficient um, efficiency. I should have said effectiveness. So. Basically, what he was showing is that how, you know, just like Adam said before, iron fist, velvet glove, in that, you know, because, you know, after a certain amount of time, people will rebel and people pay attention to what's happening in politics to a certain degree. Um, 
you have to, you know, saying kind of do some things in the dark and do some things without people knowing or do things, you know, uh, uh, in a shady way. And then in other ways, you know, put on a happy face. I mean, Barack Obama, you know, saying is one of the most like presidents, even though he increased drone strikes, even though he did nothing to push back the surveillance program like the Patriot Act, Patriot Act. Even though one of the first things he did was he tried to compromise with Republicans and um, privatize Social Security. That was something that Republicans had been trying to do for decades, but they couldn't get done. And here you have, you know, the bright black hope and shit um, who came in and, and basically was trying to pass a Republican proposal because he didn't have much of a spine. And the one person who actually stood in the way of him privatizing Social Security was, once again, Big Dick Bernie Sanders. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, that's so the thing. So the thing is, what I'm trying to get to is that, is that sometimes you have to recognize what is that is, uh, that what is (laughs) that sometimes doing what is most efficient to achieving your goals is going to require you to piss off some people and make a certain amount of people unhappy. The question is, of course, where is that line for you? Now, for an individual like me, that line ends at like you know slavery or you know abusing um, uh, uh, you know animals or you know exploiting prison labor and shit like that. Um, but ultimately, it's like I still know that at a certain point that like oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, like oh, the, the way that I want taxes to be restructured, that that will really help out lower class and middle class people, but it'll really piss off corporations. And people who and celebrity or just people who have a bunch of money and hiding it in secret accounts because I'm like I would want to fucking imprison you and just take a you know take take all that fucking wealth and that'll piss them off and everything and I won't be invited to all these brunches and their yacht you know parties and shit like that but to me but to me to me that's where the line is I'm willing to me that's something I can live with with you know well I came from nothing and blah 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 okay but then you started taking more of your fair share and thought that you earned all this shit and I'm here to remind you. Uh, that that's not the fucking case. So that to me, that's you know, in order to effect, to in order to effectively, you know, saying like change the tax code and de- redistribute those funds and shit. To me, I'm okay with the idea of going and seizing the shit or shutting down like the Caymans Islands and all these offshore accounts and blah blah and bringing all that wealth, you know, and investing it in society. Um, well, let's throw it back to you, Christine. I haven't heard too much from you. Well, About- yeah, I have to kind of agree with that. You know, with the select. I mean, honestly, do you think a lot of these wealthy people keep their funds in the banks i think they probably keep them hidden honestly well, that's well, that's what i was saying cayman islands and offshore accounts and yeah you know, hell art i mean hell even art itself art is a um art is a is a is a fucking uh scheme because yeah, you know say, if, if you have to flee if you have to flee and you can't get the money out your safe or you can't take your you know you can take your jewelry you can take your art you can take you know what i'm saying memorabilia or whatever and you know what I'm saying trade that all around the fucking world in case you can't get fiat fiat currency you know, um, but the real gist of it, it wasn't specifically with the money or, you know, people who have it. It was more so just about having to what is most efficient or excuse me, effective for getting certain goals done. And what's the trade off for that? So, like, I was just doing the analogy of how I would want to reform the tax code would require a lot of uh, pissing off a lot of rich people and corporations and people who have a lot of money and, and tend to engage in those things. I have to agree with the fact that you really do need to piss off some bridge people in order to get the job done. I have to agree. Right. Or just in general, like not even always rich people, just think about like family dynamics, you know, like whatever, you you know, you may love your family, you have certain friends and everything that you love and shit that you appreciate, but then you also recognize that they have certain behaviors and shit that are certain things that they do that you need to, that needs to be put in check. And so while that may make them a little distance towards you, um, either permanently or, or in the, in the short term, um, it's kind of like, well, as long as their actions and behaviors are still having an effect on you, um, why shouldn't you do what's, what's more efficient for, you know, saying preserving your way of life and the way that you, you know, see things? Basically, this is just reiterating, like, you know, how, you know, power is power and that we all need to take up, be more willing to take up space and understand that, you know, it's going to cause uh, disruptions in our relationships and shit. But that's, you know, sometimes it's kind of like you just, you, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but it's like you have to do it. Sometimes you have to be willing to slip the velvet glove over that fucking iron fist 
and True. saying go smack a few people because some motherfuckers don't care about your philosophy. They don't care about your morality. They don't care about your story, your backstory. They don't care about what you're going through. All they understand is overwhelming force. That's very true. You know. I think it's almost time for me to slip that glove on soon. Yeah, I mean, we all, you know, we all, we all do. You know, I know we have mutual, you know, people that we know mutually who like, you know, do certain things or you know certain behaviors, and it's kind of like, you know, sometimes you expect people to kind of you know, check themselves or to come forward and be like, oh, this wasn't cool to do that. But then after a while, you just have to accept the fact like, oh, this is just who they are. And the reason they didn't say anything or apologize is because they don't really give a fuck or this is what is right to in their mind, you know? And sometimes you got to, you know, remind motherfuckers. Yeah, the, the point I'd put on that is um, the vast majority of people, I'd say like most of the people in, in the world do not think of themselves as the bad guy, no matter what they're doing. No course not because you don't you don't nobody likes that feeling you don't want to have like this inherent guilt for what you're doing so even like these you know the most selfish uh sort of person still has like something or someone that they care about it's just where things get ugly is what they're willing to do to keep that little space of theirs safe 